episode three, three million. Ooh, wow. No idea. That's like, uh, that's a bit zealous. <laughs> episode three of the current podcast, which is underneath the mega empire of the Lakes Church podcast. Although anytime you say empire and church and immediately I feel like I should repent. Uh, the empire of God. Yeah. Scott McKnight talks about the empire of God. Uh, as a instead of talking about the kingdom because we're like we don't know anything about that but when i think empire then i think of star wars and it's a bad rabbit yeah. trail and i don't even know about star wars but oh is that what can this podcast just be about star wars not this one. Oh, dang <laughs> we're gonna the next podcast from the lake church is going to be uh have a star wars is segment. going to be star wars is this after we, the kids are listening yeah. to this? In, and the, then... <laughs> in the Russian nesting doll of podcasts, yes, yeah. there is the Sunday service and mm-hmm. then the current and mm-hmm. then the kids, kids current, which is called the puddle. And then <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, it will be the force. And that is the force connects all. Okay. Uh, by the way, we should introduce ourselves. Yes, you are. I am Elijah. I get to be the worship pastor at the Lakes Church. Great. And I'm Kyle. I also get to be the worship pastor at the Lakes Church. <laughs> Because worship is everything. Worship is everything. All of life is worship. Yeah. Um, Well, if you are new to the current podcast, welcome. Uh, If this is your third time here, welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you for putting up with us as we navigate this and figure out how to do a podcast. Yeah. I asked a, a cousin of mine by marriage, what do you listen to? And he was telling me that he listens to a very niche podcast on... Um, basically people who are engineers in the dirt. So he owns an, he owns an excavating company. And so he listens to people talking about how to move dirt. I thought there's a podcast for everything. I love that. Yeah. And for him, he's, he was reflecting on enjoying opinions in the field that he works. No pun intended. Oh yeah. And I thought, Oh, I relate to that. Um, and some of it's the the conversation. So anyways, if you're here, uh, so grateful that you're listening. Um, just, uh, a word from our sponsors at, uh, Calvary Christian schools. If you need a place for Christian education, that might sound cheeky. Um, I just want to say there's a, there's a, this is a season in the life of Lakes Church where we are getting to learn how to bless and how we're getting to learn how to partner in new ways. And, uh, I do want to say like, we just, we, we get to do church in this Christian school. Um, and I never thought that I would do church in a Christian school. Yeah. I didn't think, um, that I would, do pop-up church or portable church for as long as I've done it. It's actually, I have done portable church more than I've done in a building. I, I commend you for that and your perseverance in that. And we're honestly like going back to what you were originally saying. We're Mm -hmm. very blessed that like not often do churches one get to start in a school, which Mm -hmm. is a building that we, um, you know, we rent from, but we, it's kind of, luxurious you know we get amenities we get wi-fi there's an it guy who's available whenever we need whenever the wi-fi goes down not only that but for us to be able to do that for as long as we have Mm -hmm. for us to be able to leave our stuff set up on stage like these are all things that i think are easy to take for granted and yet have been such extraordinary blessings for us as we've begun this like church now for six years going on seven years Mm -hmm. um here i think that we're we're extraordinarily blessed in that regard Yeah. So in all sincerity, if you're listening and you call Calvary home, that is the school, and you also call the Lakes Church home, Lord bless you and keep you. May make his face shine upon you. All that good stuff. We are, by the way, not sponsored. This is not a sponsored <laughs> no, podcast. No, not at, all. That's, um, not at all. It's just kind of uh, being ridiculous. So today for the podcast, if you have made it this far, here's where we're going. We just want to do a little recap on where we're at in this series on practicing the way of Jesus, looking at being with Jesus, becoming like Jesus, and joining him in renewal. There's something interesting that happened this Sunday, and want to give maybe some clarity, flesh it out with yeah. with folks. Um, and just, uh, I want to be able uh, to offer up maybe a little, little context and a little clarity, um, because sometimes when new things happen, yeah. We get we backfill that change or the that new space with our mm-hmm. assumptions, and so that I think there's potential for us to speak into that, and then look forward maybe a little bit toward yeah. this on God uh, <laughs> thing. Um, yeah. So why don't you share your perspective of Sunday? Because for okay. those that may we we I've talked to several people who who don't 
called Lake Church their home, so mm-hmm. listen to our podcast. So why don't you, could you share your perspective on what Sunday was, how mm-hmm. it happened, and kind of the sequence of events? Yes. So uh, we're in the series Practicing the Way, uh, and it's us trying to close the gap between a posture of really like this beautiful theological posture around unity and essentials, liberty and the non-essentials, and love or charity and all things, which is mm-hmm. like, as Christians, we're going, oh, yeah, in practice, that's difficult. And it's moving us toward on the lakeshore as it is in heaven. So what does it mean for the order of heaven to manifest, become apparent and real in the disorder of earth? Yeah. Um, and that is a huge chasm. I mean, if you think about your daily life, so practicing the way is just taking up a life of discipleship to Jesus, uh, ordered around three goals of being with him, becoming like him, and joining him in the renewal he's already doing. This past week, we were on becoming like Jesus. And so we're just trying to go into Matthew 22 of like, what's the vision? And Jesus asked, what's the greatest command? He's getting tested. It's love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Another text you'll say, in all your strength, all your ma'od or all your muchness. He doesn't say that in this in Matthew 22, but he then goes, and the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. And we riffed a little bit on like the ahava, which is the love, which is to act with loyalty and faithfulness. And so in my mind, I had built out a teaching around the that that text of like the goal is to become a person of love. And by the way, that is therefore like, but how do we move toward that? Well, we move toward the thing that we look at. So we get a vision of who Jesus is. We see that he is love. And we we're doing this back and forth of being formed, conformed and transformed in the image of Jesus, who is love. And then this is really was like coming to this conclusion with this really thick quote from Dietrich Bonhoeffer. So we were going to end with a quote from Dietrich Bonhoeffer that by end, I mean begin to conclude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we were going to look at this this uh, this story of Jesus in the Gospel according to Luke. But the quote from Bonhoeffer was on cheap grace mm-hmm. versus costly grace. And so we're going to say, to become like Jesus, it will cost you something. We never got there. Mm-hmm. Um, I asked this question, and I was reminded of this, of like, should we go any further? I asked Nate, who's on our board, I said, Nate, should we go any further? He said, yeah, keep going. And then in my notes, it said, let's pause and remember and reflect and consider Jesus. Yeah. So I looked down, I went, oh, okay, well, let's just, let's keep, okay, here's where we'll go. And then um, it felt like a divine hiccup. I don't know, maybe that's weird language, but it was like this, I'm sitting there and as I was reflecting back, I was like, it, maybe it looks like or sounds like I was gathering my thoughts. I'm sitting there going, should we go forward? Are we allowed to go forward? What does that mean? What are the implications? Do we need to stop? And then I thought, I think, and I don't know if I said this out loud or I just thought this, but I'm like, I think we need to stop. And then I invited you up. Yeah. You did say that out loud because immediately me and the worship team like looked at each other because generally the, our normal order of service is the keys player will go up at, a, at when you start to close mm-hmm. and then we will come up as the ushers come forward to serve communion. Mm-hmm. Uh, when that happens, the worship team starts to take the long way around the back and I look and I go, no. And I just point straight up and we just walked straight on stage because whatever you were sensing, I was like, like the urgency for me was, oh no, we need to like, we need to be ready to respond. Yeah, like that talk was, about that readiness because I don't have that muscle memory, but you do. Yeah, so um, we one thing that's very important is is being flexible with the spirit for us, and that's something that's come from a long time growing up in this. And like, you just said something that is meaningful to you and significant to others, but also flexible in the spirit. Yes. So hold on. Before you say, I am agreeing with that, but I want us yeah. to add some flavor and context. Like you grew up in a tradition mm-hmm. where this, ha- we were just talking about this before we went live. Yeah. Where you'd be like, we'll be going. And then. Yeah. So it was it, growing up. It was very common in, in our, in our flavor of church mm-hmm. um, for us to be on stage and then something divine to happen and the entire order of service change. Yes. And that's were, what you mean by flexible in the yeah, spirit. Yeah, flexible in the spirit. Coming under, like a willful coming under, not like loud and disruptive, pop, sizzle, bang. But yeah. Like something shifts in the room, 
and there's a response. Yes, if I'm and our right. our our duty, like, and then I, I feel like as the worship team and as you know, as you as the speaker, is for us to be completely open. And we pray this. We right before service every week, we have a meeting behind stage where we all meet with the production team, with the worship team, and we say, God, if there is anything in this service that is not of you, we pray that you will unanimously, like in our hearts, strike it down. And we will. I pray that it will make it sour. Mm. That it will make that part of the service mm-hmm. sour in our mouths when we go to it. Just so that way we're fully able. But we pray that then, and in knowledge that sometimes there's something happens then where we're like, oh, something has shifted and we're not we're not actually going to do this, but we're going to make a quick pivot. Um, and then there are times like yesterday where that doesn't that prayer doesn't come to fruition until 1125 mm-hmm. when we've been worshiping for 50 minutes and you know, that portion of the service and you come up and and say this. And so what I mean by flexible in the spirit is I think that it's very important. And, and our student pastor, Maddie has prayed this and we've kind of used this as like our thing of like lay the tracks, Mm -hmm. um, for, for God to move. And so we've, we were like, okay, I, I went to the worship team and I said, um, I said, in in the mic because I told the sound guy keep me out of the house Mm -hmm. so I was just talking into the worship team's ear and I said I have no idea yet what we're going to do but be flexible and so we we were just sitting there and waiting and really just kind of like okay what the song that we had picked out to come up was not it clearly did not fit um it just wasn't in that style so we stayed up there our keys player started playing and we just stayed ready and we mm-hmm. were just, I literally told the team, I said, just be praying. Like, mm-hmm. so we were all up there praying, all up there waiting to see what God was going to do. And then, um, uh, you know, then you called a specific group of people to pray. And, and from there, so from our perspective, we just got up and got set. I, I went to the uh, lyrics person and I said, hey, we are not going to do this song. If you can find the lyrics to whatever song we decide to do, decide to tag, um, great. If not, don't don't stress about it. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I also went to our live stream tech and I said, Hey, we're going to go ahead and and stop the stream, keep recording, but we're going to stop the stream. Um, just to respect those who would come up for prayer. We don't want that, you know, want that aired and stuff. So, yeah. So suffice it to say, Elijah, Sunday felt a little different. The today I, I feel like a, a heaviness, which I don't know if that's just normal, but to, because I get to pastor in this church, I feel a sense of duty slash responsibility to just close maybe some gaps that perhaps could come in someone's imagination who Mm -hmm. has not grown up in a context like that, like me. Um, And so I like that term, flexible in the Mm -hmm. spirit. Um, However, if what what you've grown accustomed to is the and this is a gift that the church can give like there's a liturgy there's a movement there's a rhythm and that working the liturgy liturgy means the work of the people and so as you work through that god is so kind that he meets us in those places and generally speaking we move toward we have a liturgy we move toward the bread and the cup in response mm-hmm. to the word and the living word broken and uh, poured out for us yeah and if that's what you are expecting and you're uh expectations are not met that is a little disorienting a little discombobulating Mm -hmm. if you will and i would imagine that there's some folks in our community for whom that's how they that's how they experienced yesterday and i don't know the percentage i was sharing with one of our board members as we were reflecting just maybe like 85 percent of the room was on the edge of their comfort zone five percent were thinking get me out of here and maybe Mm -hmm. 10 percent were thinking all right, <laughs> let's go. Yeah. Um, I would have been a part among the 85. I was on the edge of my, like I, mm-hmm. I work hard to write a teaching. And I, I think w- the invitation in the season is, will we hear and respond to where Jesus is going? Now, here's my fear. Can I lay it for you? Mm-hmm. My fear is that all of a sudden we'll, we will shift into this mode where it's like, my minister hears from the Lord. Yeah. I'm not that dude. I want us all. Moses said, I desire all of you to be prophets. Mm -hmm. The whole, like the nation of Israel was to be a kingdom with 
Yeah. No, excuse me. A kingdom of priests, not a kingdom with priests. That is, every person is mediating the love and presence of God mm -hmm. in the world to bring order to the disorder. That was the divine vocation placed on the people, which was unfulfilled and then realized in Christ. And now we who are hidden with Christ in God are released into that same end to be a kingdom of priests. Yeah. And Peter says, a holy priesthood, a chosen people. Yes. And so, that, that I think it's beautiful. There's so much to unpack there in, mm -hmm. in what that means as us. A New Testament Christian is to be priests. I would love to get into that at some point. So, so let's just let's just start leaning into that. Priests are mediators. Mediators of what? Mediators of presence from God to a people and people to God. So we have a priestly vocation under the our great and high priest Jesus, and as such, well, what are we mediating? We're mediating the kingdom. In other words, the order of God. What did Jesus go around doing? And if you look, he shows up on the scene. And he goes and he affirms the renewal movement that God's doing in John the Baptist. So he goes and enters the water. He has that little skirmish. Mm -hmm. Bro, I got to get in the water. I can't even tie your sandals, man. Like, I, I, who yeah. am I? It's, it's almost the rebuttal that John the Baptist gives. But then, bro is not in the text, just to be clear. <laughs> dear Gen Z Bible has bro. Din, yeah. Dear listener. Dear listener, there's no bro. Um, I have no idea what that accent was. <laughs> so just keep going. But, but John receives that. He goes into the waters. He comes out and there's like this apparition of the spirit like a yeah. dove. But that's hearkening back to the creation story in Genesis of there, the spirit is hovering over the chaos waters, yeah. the tovu vavohu, the wild and waste. And the spirit's not vexed by that. It's just posted up, hovering. Spirit hovers over Jesus. And then the spirit pushes Jesus into the place of testing, into the wilderness. And where the first Adam failed the test, mm -hmm. Jesus... At his strongest, I get this from Corey Russell. Corey Russell talks about Jesus being at his strongest in the wilderness. So he may have been weak physically. He was spiritually, yeah. he was like flexed. Yeah. And there he withstands the testing of the adversary, the devil, with the word. Yeah. And he comes out, Luke will say, he comes out in the power of the spirit. So it's like, hold on a second. Jesus was, a no, like he was covered in the spirit, mm. but he wasn't full of the spirit? I thought... What's going on there? Interesting theological thing. This is related to priesthood. So he comes out and he is in the spirit, but then he's empowered and then he starts moving in power, but then he'll retreat again into the presence of God. And it's almost like he's getting refilled. It's like he's connecting to the source. Jesus will say that he can do nothing apart from his father. And then later in John, he'll say, you can do nothing apart from me. I'm in the father. And if you are in me, then you are in and you are in us yeah. and you will remain in our love. And it's this remarkable reality that this starts with being with him. So then what does it mean to become like Jesus? Well, Jesus, the author of Hebrews, says, our great and high priest who's able to sympathize with us in every single way. Mm. So he knows the human condition. He has, he's the true Israel. He's the true human and he's the great and better high priest. Therefore we are covered with his blood clear from like our conscience are clear as we're covered in his blood full atonement so we can come with confidence into his presence yeah. so now we who can come with the confidence also can go out mediating the presence so that mediation is the reality and i just think um this is this is what came to me this morning in prayer um prayer is ongoing conversation with god so i'm sitting going what the heck happened <laughs> <laughs> and this is what came the 99 and the one and I think what is feeling uncomfortable, even in me and perhaps in our community, and I want to I want to help disciple us to Jesus in this place, because we have one rabbi, his name's Jesus, is simply this. We have applied that story. You get the ninety nine, you get the the pen you get the lost coin, you get the lost mm -hmm. son. <laughs> but in the ninety nine, you have the the shepherd who is leaving to go and seek and save the lost. Mm -hmm. And often we apply that outside the church. But what if in a gathering of those who are gathered in the name of Jesus, he's saying, I am still seeking you. Yeah. By the way, people came, a, like, I'm not going to say the dude's name, but a dude came to give his life to Jesus, who we had been praying for his salvation. Mm -hmm. So um, what a gift of Jesus to come and through his church and i didn't pray with the guy and i told you before i'm like i'm so glad that that wasn't me so the the body like the the 
like the priestly ministry was exercised yesterday when somebody like the, the presence of God was mediated and um, someone said, I want to be made right. Well, the blood of Jesus covers you. The blood of Jesus covers your sin. So there's confession, there's repentance, there's covering, and there's then receiving into a family. Now this guy is a part of this new family, a kingdom yeah. of priests, a holy nation. You know, it's just like, come on. So, so it, that, that's a lot. Those are a lot of words. Um, we're talking about vocation. We're talking about we're talking about goodness, like the mediating presence of God. Mm-hmm. We're talking about maybe unexpected movement in the life of a local church. And we're talking about God showing up in a category that we thought was for maybe, and I'm just, this is an assumption. So you know what happens when you make an assumption? Yeah. Sometimes you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, and, and I'm just curious. I'm just sitting with curiosity going, what if he's trying to seek and save the lost yeah. that are in the church? I remember being that like when I was, I've been lost in the church. Like I've, I've been to church my whole life Mm -hmm. and I remember being a teenager and even still being on the worship team and all of the things going through the motions of church. And I remember like desperately wanting that and Mm -hmm. wanting to be like heard and wanting to be seen in that. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, like I, young teenager, you act out, you do all these like silly things Mm -hmm. one week. I didn't wear shoes on stage. I just wore my socks and I got in trouble. And it was just, it was a hilarious, like now looking back, I'm like, you're so dumb. But like the, the things of like going to church and going through the motions and yet still feeling invisible and still losing that connection. Hmm. And I think that there's like, there is a special place in God's heart for, for even that to be lost and still be in the church. Like, I think we, we look at the lost and you can only be lost if you're, in this and doing this and doing these things. And yet Mm -hmm. there are people who may not be living in sin and yet are missing like the connection with God and are missing the relationship and have fallen into this, like this cloud over you. And Mm -hmm. I think that there's like, God cares for that as much as he cares. I mean, he cares for us all like the 99 to leave the one he, but the one that's lost in the church can sometimes be like the hardest to come back and to the hardest to feel that return come because you're, you're in your mind, I'm doing all of the right things. I'm, I'm checking all the boxes. I'm going to church. I'm reading my Bible. I'm doing all these things. And we talked about it a couple of weeks ago of the difference between like the, I'm, I'm doing these things to check boxes, Mm -hmm. the legalism of like, well, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm reading my Bible. I'm going to church, all these things. And yet missing the relationship side of things. And I think that there are so many people who can go to church every single week and who can still love God and still, you know, call God their Lord and Savior and still feel just as lost yeah. as someone who's out doing all of the things, you know. Yes. Yeah, this is a this is a good word. I think that this is a good place for us to pivot and then hit stop, give people a break, and then we on our end can press record again in a moment and uh, hit maybe a little part two. But just to recap, because we just covered a lot of stuff, so Mm -hmm. just giving some space for digestion. Um, Anytime a new thing happens, newness is often perceived as change. Mm. Change is perceived as a threat. And so then we get in this mode of fight, flight, freeze, fawn, and often in that space, we can turn towards self-protection. We can mm-hmm. close ourselves off. The invitation of Jesus through his love is to open ourselves up. Mm-hmm. It's an invitation to receive. And so I want to just say, like, I have a no interest. I have no interest, Elijah. I almost said your middle name there. Uh, I have no interest in chasing a form. I have no interest in chasing an experience. I have no interest in any of that noise because it's just noise yeah however what i do have an interest in is being flexible in the spirit which but by which we mean attentive john 10 jesus says his sheep will know his voice Mm -hmm. and so if jesus is calling to us will we be willing to listen to him even if it is at our discomfort and if the thing right now that's being stretched is our comfort so that god can Mm -hmm. can then expand our capacity in this coming season bless god Mm -hmm. and if i'm unwilling myself i'm just talking about me i'm not projecting this onto our church yeah because i'm not going to join with the accuser and condemn our church 
But for me, if I'm unwilling to be stretched in my comfort zone, I'm fooling myself if I think that I will have more capacity to move with God in the coming season. And do we not want to be to move with God? Christians yeah. are like the only people who say, I want to be used by God and it mean <laughs> it in a positive way. Yeah. Becoming like Jesus is is moving toward joining him. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I'm not going to give Griffin a power tool right now because he is five years old and he is my son and I love him. But I see what he does when a drill is left out. Dude, he he will go and he'll take it. He will point it at his brother. Yeah. Go, vroom, vroom, you know, but then he'll, I won't have the, sa- the little safety thing on and he'll use it. So um, may we grow up. Yeah into maturity not as a condemnation maybe grow up into maturity so we can be given the tools of the kingdom Mm -hmm. to like build up the broken places yeah to bind up the broken to release healing in the world and the lake shore that we love so um i'm just gonna say a little prayer yeah and then can we press pause yeah and then can i can i just say one little thing before please please uh if you're listening to this and you were in attendance this sunday and and it made you feel uncomfortable Mm. that is okay That is not, there is no, there's no judgment. There's no condemnation. I just talked about like how like it, it may be comfortable for me, but I know so many people who that was, that could be like, well, hold up. I I pray that, that you would feel released from any shame or, um, any sort of any negative feeling that you have about what you're feeling about Sunday. And I don't know why I kind of just felt like, mm. like just speaking that, and maybe that's to no one, but I just want to say that it's totally okay for what, for just a, a, a massive pivot in, in our service and a massive interruption in our service to be a little uncomfortable. And that's, that's okay for it to be like, you know, at least a little bit like what, what the heck just happened. And yeah. you know, that I just wanted to say that real quick that like, that's not it. You, no, we're not expecting everyone in those moments you know, to just be like, everything's okay. Everything's fine. Like, it's okay to be, to, this is a, this, that was a new thing for even us, yeah. um, to have that level of, of pivoting. And so I just wanted to say like that real quick of mm-hmm. just like, it's okay. It's okay for that to be, to be weird and, and to mm. be a little, a little wild. Um, mm-hmm. you know, so that I just wanted to kind of put that little tagline on there. Yeah. I, I think that's important. Uh, I say yes and amen to that. Yeah. Our feelings are good at, indicating what's going on they are poor masters Mm. Uh, good on the dash bad behind the wheel (laughs) (laughs) so yeah we just want to want to take those and it's information i mean if you're like oh i don't do feelings well your feelings are doing something to you Mm. so it's like just consider them information in your body it's just another data set uh, that god might be willing to speak to us through so yeah i say yes yes and amen to that well uh church at all church and anybody who's listening um we're grateful for you and uh, just i I pray uh, in keeping with the apostle paul um, that you may have a spirit of wisdom and revelation so you might know god better wisdom like the hokma the the, not some hidden thing but the revealed thing of god and revelation like the unveiling the revealing of who god is so you would know him that is that is why we are here to release with Jesus, the captive. Mm. And so where our minds are held captive by fear, would perfect love cast that out in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So blessings on you. Uh, get ready for part two. If you need to, if you need some more context, we're coming for you. Yeah. Peace. Peace. <laughs>